Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about why I chose geoscience as a major, as a career, and as a passion. So let's get started. For those of you who know my channel, you know that I make a lot of videos about specific topics under geoscience, and in those it's not really appropriate or the time or place for me to talk about myself. So for that reason, I get a lot of questions from you guys about who I am, what I do, what degrees I have, if I have geology degrees, and I've even gotten questions as simple as what is my name, because my channel name is GeoGirl. So this video is where I will hopefully answer some of those questions for you, so that you know a little bit about my background and more about me. So to start with, my name is Rachel and I am a geoscience PhD student at the University of Texas at El Paso, AKA UTEP. As you can see by my minor shirt, we are the minors. And my research is focused in marine biogeochemistry, which sounds scary, but it just means that I look at the biological and chemical contents of rocks because this tells us a lot about the environment in which those rocks formed in. For example, if minerals are precipitating from seawater or if sediments are accumulating in seawater, the chemistry and biology of that seawater at the time those minerals are forming and accumulating plays a huge role in determining what kind of chemistry and biology will be preserved in that rock that we can go measure later on. And this research has broader implications in the fields of climate change and ocean acidification projections, our reconstructions of past conditions on Earth, help a lot with projecting future conditions. That's why it helps in these fields. And it also has major implications for astrobiology, which is the study of biology on other worlds, extraterrestrial worlds, which is really exciting to me. And for my research specifically, basically I study biogeochemistry of environments in aquatic conditions that have no oxygen, no light. So they act as really good analogs for possible environments where we might find extraterrestrial life. And that's why there are also implications for my research in the astrobiological fields. If you want to know more about my research specifically, you can go check out a video I made a couple uploads ago, which is a three-minute summary of my research, or more specifically, the place of my research or environment that I research, because I had to apply for a scholarship that required such a video, so I made one, and it's out on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. I think it's called something like My Biogeochemistry Research Three-Minute Thesis. So go check that out if you want to know more about that. But let's get back to why I even got into geology in the first place or geoscience in the first place, because I have told you where I'm at now, which is getting my PhD in geoscience. But what kind of brought me on this path? How did I get here? And what might geology offer to those of you out there trying to decide your career path? So I grew up with geology parents and you might be thinking like, oh, of course she became a geologist, but I actually tried my hardest to do anything but geology just because they did geology. I don't know if I was actively trying to do this, but I always knew in the back of my mind that I didn't want to be doing what they did. And so I, you know, I saw the rocks all around the house and I didn't really care. They would tell me, oh, look, this is a cool one. It has this mineral and this mineral. And every time they would try and show me something cool about geology, I would just shut it out the whole time I was growing up, my whole childhood, just because, you know, they did it and, you know, you never want to do what your parents do. So I was totally against it. <laughs> And I just kind of assumed I would do something different anyway. And then fast forward to, I was getting my undergraduate. I was in athletics. I've done athletics my whole life and I was on scholarship. And so that was my main focus. I wasn't really focused on my classes and like exactly what I wanted to do when I graduated. I hadn't really thought that far ahead, which I'm sure many of you can relate. Those of you who are thinking ahead like that, great good job. You're doing better than I was at that point. But I started getting more interested in science around sophomore year. I took a chemistry class because I was an engineering major of all things at the time. And I had to take a chemistry class and I really enjoyed it. It was just gen chem, but I really liked it. My professor was great. Obviously your teachers and professors will play such a huge role in what you end up doing, I think, because they have played such a huge role in my life, which is why I love teaching so much and hope 
hope to inspire people um, through my YouTube channel and teaching in the future as well. But that aside, I took this chemistry class. I loved it. And then I decided I didn't love engineering so much. I liked science more and I wanted to switch to a chemistry major. But at the time, the chemistry labs that were required for such a degree were really extensive and interfered with my practice schedule a lot. My coach did not like that. So he told me to not do that and instead pick something with less afternoon labs because it was all about my sport at the time, which is fair because, you know, they were paying for a lot of my school. So I decided to look back at the sciences that would allow me to branch into chemistry, but not be an actual chemistry degree. And as it would turn out, geology allowed you to minor in a different science like chemistry, for example, and you could take the lecture courses without having to take all the labs. And so that's what I ended up doing. I did a geology major and a chemistry minor for my undergrad, purely because that worked out better for my practice schedule. And I was interested to see what geology had to offer. And at the time when I was kind of against it because of my parents, I really didn't understand fully what it encompassed. But now that I have gone through getting my geology degree and moving on to graduate school in geoscience, I really understand that it's much more than what I had originally thought, which was, okay, it's just about rocks. And it is a lot more than that. Of course, geology doesn't mean the study of rocks. And now I know it means the study of earth. Geo means earth. And what I study now obviously allows me to branch out even more because I study biogeochemistry. So I get to branch out to even more fields than even the study of earth, which is already really huge. However, even though I'm saying that it wasn't just about rocks. I learned that it was so much more. I was about earth, blah, blah, blah. I also want to emphasize that rocks aren't as dull or boring as you may think think, or as I once thought, they actually all tell quite a story. And like I mentioned earlier, rocks preserve signatures in them that tell us about the environment in which they formed, or even if they've been altered, they tell us that story. They tell us what has happened in their lifetime. And it's really, really cool because we can use all of this knowledge from individual rocks from different individual locations and times throughout Earth's history and make such an amazing picture of how environment on Earth and other worlds, too, have evolved through time and spatially as well. And so that's really, really cool. And we're just starting to scratch the surface of other rocky planets or moons and understand their geology as well, which is even more amazing that we can even do this. I mean, we're about to take samples of rocks home from Mars. I mean, that's so cool. We'll get to like look at them and analyze them with all our specialized and high tech machinery and stuff. It's so freaking cool. But anyway, rocks tell a story. They're really cool. I'll leave it at that. We'll move on. Um, but yeah, don't get the misinterpretation that rocks are boring in any way. They are actually really, really information packed and we have the tools to look into their insides and understand the story that they tell, which I think is so cool. So moving to my last major point in this video and my last major like branch in my geoscience journey so far, at least is this slide where I say it opens doors rather than closes them. And so what I mean by this is that geology for me was really awesome at first, because obviously, like I said, my parents were in it. I didn't really want to do it. And then as I got into it, I realized that all of the other sciences that I was interested, like chemistry and biology and, you know, no, I'm not the most physics-y person, but physics as well. Um, all the other sciences are brought together by geology. I mean, geology brings you to the intersection of all of these other sciences. And I was that kind of person that didn't want to pick just one. And that's why I ended up falling in love with geoscience because it brings them all together, especially now that I get to study biogeochemistry, you know that I'm able to branch out to so many different fields because of that, but also just because geology in general intrinsically in 
encompasses other sciences because you have to know a little bit about all of them and you can focus on like geochemistry or geophysics or geobiology or biogeochemistry or all these different combinations of sciences because we're understanding that these sciences really overlap in such an intricate way especially when it comes to geoscience so that's another reason why geology was so amazing to me is because of the other sciences you get to study within geological fields and I think that if you are the type of person like me that didn't want to pick just one research field or one little tiny niche to go into and kind of put yourself in a box then I think geology is perfect for you or anything in the geosciences or environmental sciences I think that's great and it's funny my department just recently changed their name from geological sciences to department of earth environmental and resource sciences because it is something that encompasses earth environmental and resource sciences but a lot of people are deterred by geological sciences because they don't know that that's what it encompasses and so it's important that we you know i guess make that easy for people like undergraduates to understand so that they're intrigued and they don't think oh geology mm, like it's not that it's literally earth environmental and resource sciences and more obviously as you can see here so anyway i'll wrap it up but the last thing i have here is just saying that earth holds so many answers to so many of our major scientific questions that we have today and all we have to do is look i mean there are so many things yet to be discovered when i first went in to geology i thought well everything's already been mapped everything's already been figured out why would anybody ever hire a geologist for anything what do we even do uh because it's all figured out already but that is so 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 not the case and actually i'm going to be talking about that in an upcoming video called careers in geoscience so look for that video if you want to know more about careers in the geological sciences and the last thing i want to talk about today is i asked you guys to suggest me topics or just to ask me questions on instagram and one of you guys asked me what is the hardest thing i've had to overcome while studying geology and i thought this was a really good question to include here so i'm going to tell you mine and i'd love it if you would tell me yours your hardest thing you've had to overcome while studying geology or whatever field you're in down below in the comments i'd love to hear your opinion on this and hear what fields you guys are studying or if you're not studying anything what the hardest thing you've had to overcome is so please go ahead and comment that down below but mine personally that i can think of right now this might change as i grow in the field but right now the hardest thing i've had to overcome and i'm still working on overcoming it it's still very hard for me is receiving reviews for publishing papers so if you guys don't know when you go more of the academic or research route that i'm going in geoscience as a career i have to write and publish papers in general you have to publish or you perish that's the saying you publish or perish and I don't mind writing the papers. I enjoy writing actually, and I enjoy the research, but getting reviews back, which just means you submitted your paper and the editor that received your paper at that journal sends it out to reviewers, so experts in your field, to review it and then give you their comments, if they have comments, which they always do, and you have to fix their suggestions and then resubmit it and see if it gets accepted that time. And this can happen over and over again, or they can just say, this sucks, you're getting rejected. And theoretically, they can say it's accepted, there's no comments or suggestions, but I don't think that really happens. But anyway, I submitted my first paper that I am corresponding author on last December, and I'm just now getting my second round of reviews back and having to revise it again. And it is a process, guys. I don't mind doing the revisions themselves, but reading the reviews is so like, oh, I think you just have to develop like thick skin, but I'm not there yet. And so that's something that's really hard for me right now that I'm trying to overcome. Um, but I think if you have a lot more co-authors, it's probably an easier process. But since it's just me and my advisor, it's like anything they say like I take it so personally because like this paper like I totally wrote it almost all of it so it's like oh my god I'm doing something wrong and you just think it's about you but it's not and another reason they're so harsh they're not I haven't even gotten bad reviews and I'm already like freaking out I know but another reason they're so 
harsh or at least blunt sometimes the reviewers is because they're anonymous and so they can use that to kind of like hide behind i haven't gotten anything really mean yet um they're just really blunt and it just really scares me it just makes me feel like i'm doing everything wrong <laughs> because nobody gives you reviews back and says this is great this is great this is great they only point out the things that you need to fix <laughs> Oh my god. So anyway, I'm sorry to rant. I don't want to rant. I just, if you're going to do this path, know that it's hard to get reviews back, but you'll develop some thick skin. You'll not take it personally like I do. Don't do that. That's wrong. You guys are probably like, how is she on YouTube? Like if she doesn't have thick skin. <laughs> just, you have to understand that the haters online have like zero credentials and you can kind of just like ignore them because who, who, who are they to tell you what, like, I get a lot of positive feedback on my channel and that's what I focus on. And so I can like just put away all the dislikes and the hate comments because like I get a lot of positive feedback too. And those haters aren't like professional scientists that I look up to, whereas these reviewers are, they're experts in my field. So if they know that I'm doing something wrong, they must be right. And it's a lot more, it's a lot more scary. That's it. Okay. I'm going to stop ranting anyway. That's the answer to your question. <laughs> And I hope you guys can tell me what your hardest thing you've had to overcome is in the comments below. So I look forward to reading those and uh, I hope you guys look forward to the geology careers video. And if you guys ever want to ask me questions that I might answer in a video like this one, you can just message me on Instagram at geogirl underscore gram. And with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. This is not good. I hope people like this not that interesting. Oh, I'm sorry if this is boring. <laughs> My body doesn't even want me to talk about me. I feel like I'm doing everything I can to make this lecture not about myself because that just makes me so uncomfortable. I guess that was okay.